Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. So tell me, mate, um, like, as I say, this, this uh, pod is, is really around, like, international... Well, I'm, I'm really interested in people who are investing, like, in, in like, conferences and, and, and taking yeah. time out. And, like, what, I, what I'm desperately keen to, uh, for people to avoid is, like, the, you know, we've all been to the conferences where it's just, like, a sales vlog and, you know, you know, they've got mini pies there and like more, more people are interested in the bit, the booze over the, the kind of content. And I'm just like, I would hate, I would hate for anyone to kind of invest the money overseas, uh, you know, and then, and then sort of be led up the garden path just to find that it was just a, an international version of that. So I was like, let me, let me see if I can get together people who have either good, bad or different experiences and, and let's sort of have a, you know, let's, let's, let's sort of walk it through. So tell me what, what what's been your experience? Maybe with conferences locally, and then we can go international. Yeah, look, um, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in educating yourself as a as a professional. Um, I've uh, done a master's of applied finance, undergraduate degree, CFP, uh, SMSF special advisor. So I've done all the, I suppose, educational side of the actual uh, studies. Um, International conferences are very different to the um, the conferences that are run by your licensee. Uh, the licensee conferences are more, in my view, uh, meeting businesses, doing your CPD points, teaching you legislation updates, um, stuff that's important uh, and it's need to know, but it's, uh, it's not really developing your skill set too much. Generally, they're provided by sponsors and um, product providers who are paid to be there. So there's a bit of a conflicted approach to it. Um, the study tour that I, I um, undertook was uh, at uh, Cambridge uh, in the UK. Uh, it was put on by the licensee that, uh, that I was with. Um, and it was basically a collective group of businesses, about 20 of us, um, to go to uh, Cambridge and study in their, in their business school there. Uh, and it was nothing to do with the Australian economy, Australian legislation. It was actually how to become a more efficient leader, how to be operationally smart, um, how to almost run a more successful business in a uh, high pressure environment. So there's more development of uh, self as opposed to, hey, this is a legislation change. So yeah, I'm a big believer on uh, international study tools, but it's got to be the right one and you've got to be at the right time in your career to, to, uh, to do it. What, what, made you, what made you pull the trigger to say, yep, I'm in? Well, um, I uh, took out the uh, Young Advisor of the Year Award for the uh, licensee nationally uh, a few years ago. Um, and as part of that, uh, I was uh, provided the opportunity to attend. Um, it was only open to the top 20 businesses of that licensee. So it was a very select group that was able to go. Um, yeah. Having won the, uh, the national award, I was uh, given the opportunity to attend. So it was a great opportunity um, to deal with businesses that were larger than the ones that I was working in, but also um, to leverage off their skill and expertise where most of the ages of the people who attended were probably 45, 50 plus. Um, so being in the 30s, it was a great learning curve from uh, my peers. On that, on that, mate, super keen to uh, get a sense of, like, for those that paid full freight, what, do you know what they, what they spent? What were the costs? Yeah, look, uh, you know, flights for the UK caught sort of circa 1500 to two grand. Um, the actual cost, I think it was about $3,000, um, and I'm assuming it's probably part of it sponsored by the licensee and, you know, probably some fund managers. Um, whilst we were there, we did the study tour and went and saw a few uh, of the uh, uh, man uh, managed investments that were in the portfolios of the models. Um, so we had a bit of site visit as well. So I'm assuming there was a bit of a cost coverage from there, but mm. out of pocket for myself, set of flights, um, ran about sort of 1500 bucks on top of that to cover the cost. So it wasn't a huge expense, but uh, uh, it's, still, it's still a commitment to, uh, to further developing yourself. 
Was it something Cambridge put on just for the licensee, or you, was it more that the licensee is plugging into something that Cambridge? Is no, but, but, yeah, good question. Uh, the licensee just plugged into an existing um, sort of a short uh, business business um, orientated sort of uh, program. Um, it was run for effective leadership. So uh, the lecturers were all lecturers of Cambridge, um, high quality candidate or high quality speakers, and uh, yeah, they plugged into an existing uh, framework that uh, Cambridge do for more executive leadership coaching, okay. um, which was done over about a three-day period. So, Yeah, and uh, oh, three days, okay. And was it, was it because I, I was just uh, talking to uh, Glenn James, actually, who was talking about uh, Stanford, oh, sorry, FinCon, actually, and, and they do, they're, they're a bit different where it's like you, they have a lot of events on at the same time. Uh, and you kind of plug and choose exactly what you want to do at what day, uh, as opposed to like having like nine to five. So how how did how did kind of Cambridge run it over those three days? Yeah, it was, a, it was a structured format. So it wasn't where you had a selection. It was basically they had put the class together. Um, it ran from um, specialist um, lecturers who dealt with crisis management and um, highly efficient teams under stressful situations, through to um, leaders in their chosen field um, in HR matters. So there's quite a diverse scope of work. Uh, it was tailored towards a very um, bite-sized, take things away to take back to your own businesses. Mm. Uh, it was uh, there was homework involved as well. You know, case studies to read and have a. Um, having an understanding of heading into the uh, heading into the uh, the, uh, the course, um, so yeah, it was, it was quite structured and quite well organised. Yeah, okay. Uh, and did they send you the homework before you went away, or was it was it? Yeah, so homework was sent about a week or two before. Uh, um, just cases that uh, challenge your thought process about uh, difficult team situations, um, difficult employees in part of the team environments. I was really trying to work on um, how to run an efficient uh, business in a high pressure environment, which you know financial planning is that at the moment. So, yeah. Did, was it was it just you guys that were there, or was it was there uh, like I don't know UK or European businesses as well? No, so it was just, it was just put on for the actual um, the team that uh, went across from the licensee. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, just 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 specific to us. And uh, in, so something I and actually this is a conversation from from earlier, but. Um, something that struck me, I, I, I went on a study tour to New York and Boston back in 2014 and one thing that I was guilty of, I think, although we desperately tried to avoid it, was like going away for a couple of weeks, being super inspired, learning like uh, new ideas, uh, you know, and, and your, your brain starts ticking with all this sort of, you know, wonderful, wonderful inspiration and then, and then you kind of land back in, well, Sydney for me, Perth for you, say, and then just just like... Inbox is like flooded because you've not been in the office for a while, uh, and then before you know it, you've you've sort of knocked over the first month. And it's like I don't even really remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 really good yet, yeah. and and that's probably uh, we call it um, the failure to implement. You know, um, so if you don't go and learn it and don't bring it back and try and take some learnings from it, um, then you don't actually get much from it. it you, you add it to your sort of self and. You know, when you're talking about something, it comes back for content. But um, to give an example, look, I've actually got the uh, got the folder here. So oh, happy it sits, sits on my desk. Um, I refer to it quite regularly, more around um, strategy and planning. Um, when we're talking about team and maximising efficiencies in our business, I pull it out, flick through it, um, and just make sure that you keep referring back to it because it's quite good content um, and uh, well set out and well thought out. So. Yeah, it, failure to implement, you need to make sure you keep instilling it and keep yourself accountable to, uh, to taking the learnings from it. Did you, did you have any sort of structured way of making sure that you, you, you actually gave it the time it deserved when you came back? Yeah, yeah. so basically because of the fact that the, the business uh, was uh, part funding it, not out of my own pocket as per se, um, I had to be accountable to uh, you know, my, uh, the directors and owners of the business. So part of the uh, process when I got back was actually to present back to them um, the, the, the top five things, the key takeouts that uh, I felt was uh, valuable to the business and what would add value to the business in a short period of time. So that was something that we did. Um, did we execute every single one of them? No, we didn't because everyone has uh, their own opinion um, and some of, the, some of the focus areas weren't quite uh, agreed upon by all in the room. But um, yeah, that was a great way of sort of instilling and thinking about what was the key takeaways. Um, 
because of the fact there's a number of businesses and there's a few West Australian businesses that attended, uh, we also you know kept in touch and, and spoke uh, spoke post post the actual uh, study tour because we stayed on for a, a little bit of extra just to talk about what they fought and you know again collaborate with other businesses which um, which was a value as well. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, that, I love that, and and there's a lot on like, and I've started to learn now. It's like a lot on like the content and the structure is like obviously good, but it's it's almost yeah. as important to learn like or to just to network and then you know be in a space with people who are you know looking to do interesting things as well, and then you can kind of leverage yeah. it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, something that, uh, and, and it's interesting you talk about like not implementing everything. I totally love the idea of like, like thinking, thinking practically about how you're going to implement it almost to the extent of like, I don't know, I'm thinking for people who listen to the podcast cast and don't maybe have a kind of a, a board or, or other directors, but rather a, a maybe more accountable, like they're, they're, they're accountable to themselves. Um, the idea of like when you listen to the content, uh, listen to it in the spirit of like, what? How would you present this, or how how can you can how can you engineer this to be something that's practical in the business, as opposed to kind of just like sitting back, taking taking the content, and, you know, literally and just like letting letting majority of it wash by until I don't know. Does that does that kind of was that yeah. for you to be like, well, like when you're listening, your account, like you have to listen because you know that when you get back to Perth, you're like, you're, you're on, like you're, you're on the spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always hard because uh, most people who've gone to conference know that there's a lot of uh, beers and wine and uh, good spirits had of a night time. So, you know, <laughs> rocking up to those classes uh, in the morning with a, with a slight, uh, you know, frostiness across the eyes is always difficult, but um Look, end of the day, you go into those things going, okay, we're here for a short time. Um, want to get maximum value out of it uh, and make sure that you're going away with you know, key takeaways that you can bring back to your business to improve it um, and add value to the clients uh, that uh, we support. So um, thinking through how, you, how, um, how to present it back to the fellow directors was, was one, but um, also looking about how do you present it to the team, the broader team, because there's no point running a business that's uh, highly efficient um, and uh, not being able to deliver it to a broader audience. So um, like all conferences and all presenters, they have their videos and clips and, you know, sort of their messages they're trying to get across. So, um, you know, brought a few of those back as well just to sort of show the guys, um, you know, those two-minute YouTube videos that are inspirational or two-minute YouTube videos that are really much trying to focus on a particular topic and um, trying to extract a, a message. Um, so brought those back Um yeah, just a way to how to deliver it really easily and concisely that people will buy into it. Um, so as I said, the study tool was more around efficiency, leadership, um, high optimization of your business. So that was a, the focus of the study tour. Uh, I'm assuming others will probably be more tailored towards different content. But um, yeah, it's great, great learning, great, um, great investment into, into myself as a, as a professional and leader. That, that thing, you, yeah, was, you literally captured the second piece of it, which was like, Firstly, like thinking about it in the way of like how do I how do I make sure I'm accountable and engaged and like to be, to like present, but also something that I'm I'm learning is like it's all well and good for you to go overseas and have like this epiphany thing of like you know obviously you know it just naturally being on an airplane opens your horizon in terms of the way that you think, but yeah. also when you come back to the office, it's like you you there needs to be some sort of a recognition. I think it would be helpful to like recognize that not everyone's been on that journey and you can't just like start saying some whack shit, you know, <laughs> like you need, yeah, exactly. you need to get take people along your, your journey and like get by. And otherwise, like you say, it's, you know, people might not accept, you know, the idea and, 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 you know, you, you, you may fall short, I guess. Yeah, exactly right. Everyone's got their own opinions and their own sort of biases and standpoints. So, um, it's about how you deliver the message back. Um, you know, so uh, that's also part of what the uh, conference is about, you know, making sure you able to deliver a message in a very clear and concise mm -hmm. way that uh, empowers people but also brings people along for the journey. So, what, so um, getting back to leadership. And, sorry, I was just going to ask, what, what, so what was the content specifically on? Like what were the sessions on? Yeah, so uh, there's... Um, there was around about uh, seven different speakers. Um, there was one guy who was a doctor in um, human behaviour. Um, he studied for a couple of years in, um, in war zones 
and watching the um, way in which uh, emergency teams um, fixing someone who's been injured at war. Um, so he was watching the study and learning from how they operate as a team to uh, you know extract maximum value under high pressure. So it started with that. Uh, and then it went through to, you know, business coaches who provide consulting services, but also lecture around um, optimization of businesses uh, through to, you know, uh, successful um, people who have run teams of hundreds of people in, uh, in uh, HR and how to manage staff effectively. So there's quite a broad skill set of um, uh, lecturers all who study regularly and are uh, lecturers at Cambridge on an ongoing basis. So they weren't just ring in, so to speak. Um, content was delivered in a very professional way, like you'd expect from a university. Um, so it wasn't just a you know, presenter coming in, giving them their two cents worth and then going back to their daily job. So we actually were employed lecturers, which was great. And okay, like you're, you're a bit different, I guess, because you're, you're kind of a, a decent sized business. But like, I, I wonder if like, yeah, like listening to the, I assume like Cambridge, big business, like great, wonderful ideas. It's like, well, hang on. Like if you're a small, small business, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, two, three people say, like, yeah. is it, does, does the content get lost on, on them or is it, is it, is it, no, it's, it's, yeah. Well, the content I don't think is lost at all because once you've learnt it and, and experienced it, if it was good content, it should stick with you in some way, shape or form. Maybe not consciously, but subconsciously. Um, any investment into you becoming better at what you do or better person or better professional, it's not lost. Um, I think um, if you're a big business or a small business, you've got to sort of go into there with what do I want to take out of it and what's important to me. So going in there... I didn't have the pressures of um, you know the emails banking up and client uh, client uh, inquiries because I had a team behind me doing the actual sort of day-to-day uh, -day work while whilst I wasn't there. So um, I went there really to um, self-develop was what I was focusing on. Whereas others may have been still working around the conference, but theirs were maybe more around how to extract efficiencies and become better at delegation, as an example, or you know how do they run their businesses where they can actually build it to a level where they can actually employ staff or, you know, it was, it was, it was much, you basically take out what you want to take out of it. And there's a lot of content that you could be adapted to big, small or anything in between size businesses. So yeah, yeah. it's good. It goes back to yourself. I, I get, I get a sense like, uh, again, um, for the, especially the universities, it seems like they do these uh, two, three day themed yeah. sessions on like uh, the example I heard of earlier was like negotiation or like, you know, human behavior or, you know, yep. leadership or I don't know, like, yeah. Okay. And, and as part of that, like if, if I'm listening to this and like, okay, well, I'm kind of keen to hear what, what they're doing over the next sort of 12 months. Is, is there like a Facebook group or do you, are you, are you across like how they advertise for this? How do they kind of ping you and say, Hey guys, if you want to invest some money and time, this is how you get, get to us. Yeah, look, I, I suppose the only way I've ever seen um, opportunities to go to these type of uh, overseas study tours. Um, so I've been to overseas conferences uh, with a licensee. They're, they're different. This is not an overseas conference junket, so to speak. It's actually uh, an overseas study tour where it's open to a select few. Now, how I found out about it was purely because of the fact that um, it was a very select group of people uh, who were offered the opportunity. Um, ultimately, it was organised by the licensee, so therefore they were selective of who they brought. Mm -hmm. um, could you go and invest your time and look at it? Of course you can. It's a, it's a, an executive coaching role, a business that you could have gone and done yourself. But it, it comes back to, um, I suppose, you as an individual, what are you wanting to take away and learn? Mm -hmm. um, if you have to wait for someone to provide you with an opportunity to do something, well, it's probably not an opportunity you probably were looking to do anyway. Um, so I think if you, if you really know from a skill set, your gaps and what you're trying to achieve, you can go find these type of uh, study tools yourself and not be so reliant upon others to find it for you, which um, if I hadn't been offered the role through the licensee, would I have done it? I would have done some form of study and would have allocated some of the resources and financial support to do something, but maybe not um, that type of study. But yeah, it was, it was great, uh, great, uh, great experience. Um, I haven't seen much advertised outside of that. So you hear your Wharton Business Schools over in the US, You've got your Cambridge, which do a bit of it, but outside of that, it's not really something that um, many people try to uh, you know have on their on their list of study um, uh, study, I suppose, study goals. So, 
just yeah, come back having a clear. That's what I wonder is the opportunity, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's an academic house, like. Yeah, you got you got to, you got to invest money to make money from that concept, and if you invest in yourself, well, it hopefully should come back um, twofold um, in your skill and experience. So, um, having a having a clear study plan for yourself, I think, is really important, whether that entails doing a study tour or not overseas that's a personal choice um i found it really really valuable for my stage of career um after doing my study so if you're a 21 year old would you get much from it not at all it's like that saying when you're looking at an mba type study where they say you have to have a certain amount of gray hairs um in my case certain amount of lost hairs <laughs> but um yeah you have to be a certain level in your career to get maximum value out of it and i think those study tools are probably aimed more for people who have had you know 10 15 years experience in profession um and are looking more for a quick injection of here's a here's a quick time extract maximum value so it comes back to your stage of life and career where you're at and your study so you goals you think you'd, you'd probably want to have an established career before you 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 make the leap what was that sorry you, you're saying you probably do want to have like a an established career and like Maybe not a couple of years out of university. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, have, you have to, the, the, the study tours are very much focused on a very short period of time and they cram a heap of stuff in there. So without the life experiences in business, you, you're going to lose a lot of the value you get from that. And you, you can't contribute to the conversations at a group level either because you haven't experienced it yet. So I think um, if I was putting a study tour from an education point of view in sort of order, I probably would make sure that I've had my, you know, the basic studies with your undergraduate um, and have time in, in your profession first before you start looking at it. So it may be your early 30s, late 20s, depends on where you, where you see it. So Yeah, although I'm kind of conscious that a lot of people who are listening to this are like, well, yeah, going international would be delightful, but in fact, I'm going to negotiate my way through a grad cert, whatever, for phasia and da 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 da, da. Yeah, yeah, but it sounds yeah. like this is kind of over and above that, right? Yeah, look, I, I, if you're looking at um, you know uh, spending your money well from an education point, it's definitely a very well worth spend on your education. But you know you've got to have your basics studied, and so you can actually practice in your chosen profession. So it's not going to replace your mandatory studies for your profession, but um, it's going to uh, add a lot of value um, once you have, uh, have got those basic or your, your, your minimum entry criteria studies done and dusted. So um, anyone who's looking at doing it, I'd highly, highly recommend it. You can tack on a few days of holiday before well, no, or after. You, you keep pinching the, my next question. So like, uh, I'm, I'm reading this conversation, mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what is the, where, where, what, what do you do around that? So, like, three day conference. It sounds intensive. Like, yeah. Before, after, how do you kind of like? What do you do? Yeah. So, young family. So, I couldn't have been away from home too long. So, uh, <laughs> I uh, negotiated very, very well with uh, with my spouse and uh, was able to get a, yeah, a couple of days on the end. So, um, we just lost your video. I think. Oh, sorry. Phone call just rang for him. <laughs> yeah, so I was able to negotiate quite a few days off. So, um, I was only gone for a week and a week and a bit in the end. So. Left on a Thursday, flew in a couple of days um, before, main part of the, uh, the study tour, and then a couple of days at the back end. So I was only gone for a bit of a week, but um, those few days away, just thinking about the contents, um, seeing different landscape, you know, everyone loves travel. Um, it was really good. So How definitely, yeah. Uh, what's that, sorry? How long ago did you go? Uh, it was back in 2015. So it was about four, three to four years ago. So it was quite a, quite a decent time in, in regards to my career. But um, the learnings are still there, still, still taking bits and pieces from it. And uh, you do, you do to go back, mate? Um, yeah, look, I'm actually going back over Christmas, taking the family this time. So, uh, yeah, UK. yeah. So off to the UK and uh, yeah, through Europe with the family for Christmas. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. With a bit of luck, you'll be able to grab those ashes and, and bring them back. Um, yeah, yeah. Less, less beers, unfortunately, but um, that's <laughs> a different time, different place. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's fair enough. And in terms of like next, like your next kind of uh, investment into yep. study, uh, doesn't need to be international. But where, yep. where is next for you? Uh, well, uh, I invested my uh, more time cost into the phaser exam, which I've uh, done in the past, so that's done. Um, and uh, enrolled into the uh, ethics subject uh, starting second of September. So basically, trying to round out the uh, the phaser studies. So come Christmas time, I'm 
phase your compliant court that. Um, so that's where I'm focusing my attention at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Tell me everything about the phase your exam. Um, look, as I think people are scared about it, but don't be scared. Just do it. Yeah. Um, the content's not there to test your technical knowledge. It's there to test your thought process about what's right and wrong and what a way would you approach it in, in a real life scenario. So it's not something you can actually study for in my book. Um, definitely know the, uh, the code of ethics set out by uh, Fazio, which is a really important part of it. But outside of that, it's just go and do it. Worst case scenario is you fail and you sit it three months later. What, what's the, a, bit of, a bit of cost of uh, um, resitting, which I think was 560 or something. So just do it would be my, uh, would be my view. And, uh, what it cost? What was that, sorry? How much was it? I think it was about 560 plus GST. So it's was about $600 um, for a sitting. So, you know, that, that's not insignificant, but... Um, a cheeky amount just to sit in a room for four hours. Yeah, I know, I know. But uh, look, it's, uh, it's, it's needs to be done. Um, it's trying to lift the standard of the profession, which I'm actually for. So, um, yeah, just get around it and do it. And uh, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised when you do do it. I think it was a 95% pass rate first time around. So, oh, wow, yeah. okay. So just go and do it would be my uh, would be my uh, advice to anyone. And when you when you register to say yeah I'm up for, I'm up, I I put my hand up I'm in. Do they do they send you uh, course notes or how did, how did that work? Um, no, so most of the phase websites pretty much the ma- majority of where the information is stored. Um, you get a good email sort of uh, a few weeks out from the exam with a with a YouTube link which uh, has a two to five minute video explaining what it's about. But that was quite useful. But um, yeah, Phaser, Phaser website would be uh, where most of the information was. Um, I see a lot of product providers, uh, Kaplan, um, some of the uh, big sort of uh, product providers doing courses. Our line um, of yeah, your BTs, your, I think there's a few insurance companies. Um, feel free to go and do it. Again, I'd actually challenge anyone who's actually practicing should be fine and sit it if they're good and ethical people. So. Right, yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of interesting. It's like, well... Yeah, if you failed, maybe there's something there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just say just back, back, back yourself, back your experience. I love that. All right, cool. Well, like it's, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like I think of it almost like back to the HSC, or I get how some people would think of it. It's like you're doing this exam for your career. Yeah. And like if you fail, you're, you're. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's um. I don't know, I'm, I'm 36, so I'm probably, I, I like to think I'm the younger generation, but I'm probably more the older generation now, but uh, um, just got to do it. You've, you've gone through your, your VC or TEC or HSC, whatever they call it, whichever state you're in. Um, <laughs> you've done your undergraduate, you've done exams. It's just nothing different to that. So um, I think it just comes back to stretching your, uh, your study muscles and uh, getting comfortable with doing exams. That's, uh, and it wasn't hard, put it that way. Yeah, okay, cool. I love that. Uh, awesome, Matt. Well, I guess just to finish, uh, what would you what would you sort of say for someone who's listening to this and like is like, ah, oh, this all sounds good. I know going overseas is an interesting thing, but yep. like, I don't know. Like, what would you say to help them just like get that confidence, to just pull the trigger and say, All right, I'm doing it. Uh, just think about um, you know investing in yourself. That's what it comes down to. You know, once you've got the knowledge, it's yours for life. Um, the more you know, the sooner you know it, the more you can apply it for, for your career. So just think about um, your spend as adding value. So you're happy to spend money on your business and getting coaches and consulting to help build it. You're happy to spend people to come and fix your family home and your cars. Actually think of it as spending money on yourself to improve you as a person and professional. So that would probably be the, the, the takeaway. I love it. Matt, thank you very much. Well, no worries.